Hello, this is Mike Tyson, and we have another episode of Hot Boxing. Oh, f***. <laughs> <laughs> Today we got the man Grant Cardone. That sounds real Italian. I'm Mike Tyson, by the way. Who are you? Define you know, yourself. I, Where you I, come I from? I am, you know, I am whoever I think I am. Yes, that's true. That, that is the story of my life, dude. So who I've are been... you right now? Right now, right now I'm uh, with you, man. I'm with a goddamn champ. Oh yeah, I guess you're true, but you know, well, I'm talking about as far as your, um, your growth the way you are. Yeah, at. so uh, look, I'm, I'm, I got a bunch of businesses that I started from scratch and uh, never really had anybody to promote me or believe in me. So I had to kind of grind this thing out by myself and raised by a single mom. And just you have brothers and sisters. Yeah, I had a. I have a twin brother, older brother that died when he was 25. I was mm. 20. So lost him really early. Lost my dad when I was 10. A lot of losses early on. And Made you strong though. Huh? Makes you strong. Those it, losses. You're probably right, man. But shit, I don't. I don't. I don't wish that on anybody, man. And it won't happen to anybody. You know, I mean, it only happens to the people that have vision. Yeah. That inspires your vision. To make them proud of you and all that shit. Yeah, I know, man. You don't think about that? They would be proud of your dad. Oh, dude, my dad oh, would be blown yeah. away. My dad right now would be tripping of the life that I've created. Because he was just trying to, he, he was the son of a, a Italian immigrants. That they, they came over here, they were shipbuilders, they landed in New Orleans. A lot of Italians came in through New Orleans. My mom's side, her dad was born on the, on the boat, never had papers to live in the United States. He was an illegal immigrant his whole life. So everything he did was behind the scenes. So I very much relate to people in the struggle because my grandfather, his whole life was like, he either had a big wad on him or he's broke. Extremist, huh? Yeah, totally. And then my dad was the conservative side, trying to, trying to break into the middle class. We had one car paid for, the house was paid for. He did everything right and then his heart blew up at, at 52 years old and five kids, and I'm sitting there, man, I wanted a dad, man. I needed a dad to teach me. I grew up in Louisiana, so I needed, I needed to learn how to fish and hunt. All my other kids, they're, they're learning how to do this shit. So I felt like I was nobody. I would look at myself in the mirror and just be like so disgusted with myself. You know, knowing I could do better. I mean, this is the whole story. My whole life has been just disappointment. Still today, I look in the mirror, I'm like, God damn it, you can do more, man. Still today. Yeah. Like I've done, and I've done so much great shit, um, man. Yeah. Like, but, but I'm still today, I'm like, you know, I get around a guy like you, I've seen you, I've seen you change so many times, man, become so many different, better versions of yourself. It's unbelievable. And when I see a guy like you, you know, and I know everybody sits here and tells you the same shit. Not, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like you should be. You should be given these flowers over and over because it's like you are such a good example of possibility and potential. And that's what inspires me. I see all these guys that are doing unbelievable things. Like I'm like, why am I not doing that? Shit. You know? Why? What's this concept thing you got where you have your last country, but... Get rid of it. Yeah, you're a fake billionaire dude, right? Yeah. That's what you're talking about? No, but he's, uh -huh. he said he, he's, he went to his last hundred and he still, like, he wants to be at zero. Yeah. Like, what's, I was, what's that about? So, so I did this show with uh, Discovery Channel. They yeah. said, hey, we give you $100. You don't have a place to live, nothing to eat, no food. We're going to drop you off in a town you've never been to. Uh, we're going to give you an old truck. You cannot use your name. Oh, shit. How, how long would it take you to make a million dollars? I said, I don't know, maybe. How long you want to give me? She's like, 90 days. I said, I don't need 90 days. I said, I don't need 90 days for sure. I said, I, maybe 30, 45 days, maybe 60. I said, but I wouldn't go for a million. I'd go for 10 million. And I don't need your 100. And she's like, what? I said, I don't need your $100. Fucking $100, nothing. Anyway, I don't have any money on me right now. <laughs> Got nothing. Okay. What you got on you, man? I got nothing, bro. I got I got a pair of AirPods. <laughs> okay, and 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 this pocket's empty. I do not have a credit card. Anything in the car? There's nothing in the car. There's a Glock in the car. Oh. There's a Glock in the car. I'm a loser. How much you pay for the bullet? Is it me being a loser? Look how much money I got in my. I just went to Starbucks. Yeah. But you see, you see, so, see, look at this. Look at this. Let me see this. You see? See, there you go. Now he can't get that. 
I can get it from him. Like having like a couple grand in my pocket. To well, Starbucks. I'm just saying, like if you didn't have it and you needed something, you'd figure out how to get it without paying for it. Mm. Mm. So I get dropped off. This is a true story. So I go to Discovery. They said, hey, we want you to do this show called Undercover Billionaire. You're supposedly this guy could do anything. How long would it take you? I said, dude, I'm telling you, I don't need any money. I said, I'll bet you guys a million dollars that I can pull this off. And I brought a bag, a million dollars of cash, dropped it off on the table. You guys keep the money if I don't do it. And she's like, fuck, you got the show, dude. You're fucking, you're going to be, this is going to be fucking amazing. Okay. So um, this was March 2020 that I did this. Um, what's going to happen in 20 days is the entire country is going to be shut down and 40 million people are going to be out of work. It was right before COVID happened. So I didn't know that shit was going to happen. So they dropped me off in Pueblo. It's 15 degrees. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Sun's about to go down. And I don't have food. I don't have water. I don't have a place to live. And they said, what's the first thing you're going to do? I said, the first thing I'm going to do is take this $100 you gave me and bring it to Wells Fargo and drop it off. And they're like, why? What? Accumulation. They're like, you need to get rid of the hundred. No, I said, no, I don't it. need to get. I, I said, they're going to, you're going to need the hundred dollars to live off of. And I said, no, I need to get rid of the hundred dollars. I don't believe ways. so. I didn't think it takes an art to handle money. Mm -hmm. There's so many people who, whatever our ideology about whatever race, they make a lot of money. They, that's not true. All of the guys from a hundred years ago that, um, that didn't know, like Ziegfeld and all the fuck, they didn't know about taking care of money, Vanderbilt and those guys. They were living large until 1913, and they, they had taxes, and it wiped out a lot of billionaires. The robber barons got wiped out. Mm -hmm. Only probably four families succeeded and continued to make money for the rest of the generation. But normally, they were wiped out. Yeah, because those guys prey on one another, too. Yeah, oh, you know, absolutely. That, that's the other oh, thing. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. When it gets to the top of the food chain, they go eat each other. But, but um, Oh, yeah, dude. It, it, yeah. Like, we're all sitting at a poker table, right? Like, let's say there's five, five big rich guys sitting at a poker table. They could all be friends, but they, they all have one goal. Carnegie didn't like Rockefeller. That's right. Because they he, want each other's money. No, he, he made his, he, he caused um, Carnegie's mentor to commit suicide. Oh, I didn't know that. Tom Glass, I believe his name was. Yeah, to the extent like that. But yeah. like, you're right, they feed on each other. Dude, the, the, yeah. like, like BlackRock, you know, the, the, the Blackstone that was founded by Schwartzman brought a guy named Larry Fink into the game that founded BlackRock. Yep. So Larry Fink should be, in, you know, like, this is an $11 trillion company. Trillion, not billion, trillion. They spill billions. Okay, they waste them. So Larry Fink comes into the game under Schwartzman and says, hey, I want to start this other company. I want you to invest in it. And, and Schwartzman says, no, Schwartzman's company is worth a trillion dollars. The new guy coming in being mentied ends up building another company called BlackRock that's worth 11 times the money. I think what's going on right now with the Fed and the interest rates and all that, they're trying to put pressure on Blackstone. Like BlackRock's trying to consume Blackstone. They, they put pressure on one another, you know? And in and, and, and all but games, it's great because it's competition. It's tremendous competition. The competition man, competition like, makes you a better, better um, businessman, better fighter. It's just competition. Even if you lead, even if you lose, you become experienced from that loss. Just don't give up. Keep fighting. That's pretty much what happens. How do you do that, though? How do you do that when you not, not quit? Because um, in all actuality, you have to want to be up more than anybody in the world wants you to be down. It's yeah, competition. Yeah. yeah. And competing with yourself. This is what it's about. That's what we all do. We can't compete with other people. We can only compete with ourselves because we're the zenith of ourselves. That's just what it is. Yeah, That's I mean, I know. I, like, I can't compete with these people. These people have. Uh, I'm a blueberry. <laughs> you know, I'm like. But 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 I am I am trying to figure out how do I become that? You know, how do I become those people? If you want to become those, you know, to have more in your life, take care of your family and. So anyway, the, the hundred dollar thing, back to the hundred dollar thing was I just learned that having money is not really money is not very useful in in your pockets. Well, you know, I like money. I like to have cash and I like to give homeless people. I like to give money out to people. So I like to have cash. I like to, I don't care if I have twenty thousand. Most I get yeah. most of that out yeah. to people. Yeah, I love doing that. Yeah. You know? But just having it in my pockets, I'm gonna end up wasting it on yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent, yeah. 
I mean, I go to the Amateur Mall and I see people walking in and buying, we were talking about shoes earlier, you know? They're freaking $1,000, 1200 <laughs> He's complaining. Worse, they got credit cards and they're banging credit cards. I mean, we have more credit card debt in this country today than we've ever had. More student debt, $2 trillion worth of student debt uh, that people can't pay back. Mm -mm. It's insane, man. It's insane people go spend four or five years in college. This is an indoctrination in this country. We're indoctrinated. We are not- To beat the system. We're not illiterate. We're not financially illiterate. That is not true. This is a fucking label put on people to make people feel stupid. They're not stupid, they're indoctrinated. Save your money, buy a house, get a good job, go to college, get a higher education. None of this is true, by the way. Higher education does not those prove. Are, those are investment myths. <laughs> those, are, those are investment myths. Like going to school. Save your money is a, is, is a complete, that only benefits the banks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you said you stated that uh, going to school is a Go, going to college is. I went. I spent five years in college. Complete. Well, my son's. I think it was like sixty thousand per semester. Yes, yeah, complete, complete, ridiculous. Awesome like if you look at yeah. statistics today, today the forty-year-old male or female today uh, has less savings than twenty years ago with somebody that didn't go to college. <laughs> so. It's not true. It's not. Now they're going to keep selling that is that people need higher education. They're going to tell you, oh man, uh, you know, communities that are disenfranchised need an education, and we need to give them the money to go to education. It's not true. It's five years that are wasted. Lawyers in the future will not. You won't need a lawyer anymore. You're, you're going to need. You're going to go to Chat GPT or some AI, yeah. and they're going to write your fucking exactly. contracts. Lawyers, lawyers are going to get crushed. I always, I always thought school was something you fall back on when you fail and everything right. else. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how I looked at school. I never went anywhere because I knew I was going to succeed in life. But that's my opinion about school. Well, you got to learn skills. Yeah. You got to get great at something. But learning, learning a bunch of stuff, most of which yeah. will be outdated by the time your kid's out of school. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So my kids want to know whether they should go to college or not. I'm like, I ain't paying for it. <laughs> you want to go, you pay for it. You do, you, you pay for it, you figure it out. And if you go, you should go to Harvard, Yale, go to one of these schools where you get to meet the Obamas or the Bushes. Because the only thing valuable at school today is who you meet, who you network with. Like political connections. Yeah, make the connections. If you want to be president of the United States, go to college. Otherwise, you want to be a doctor, operate on Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. And I give them a colonic, whatever. No way. You don't need a. You don't need a college I believe, degree. I believe in none of that shit. I believe in medicine and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need nothing in life. You don't want to go to the hospital, do you? I haven't been there in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny though because all the millionaires I know or anybody successful, there's really no real school background. It's like. I mean, all the school held them. Out. School held them back. Yeah. yeah, the guys you were talking about, yeah. eighth grade, eighth grade dropouts. Yeah. Every one of them. Not one of them even finished high school. Mm -mm. These guys were Illiterate. gangsters. Well, now the mean. new ones, they were mean though. Yeah, totally they were mean, ruthless. And then later they become reputational. Yeah, you know, later yeah. they're banks. But exactly. in the beginning, they were sales guys, Killer promoters. Love. What about um, Carnegie and those guys? That's where people gangsters. Were, Rockefeller was gangster. You didn't, yeah. if, I don't want to talk. Right. Jo Joseph talk. Ken Look Rockefeller. at Joseph Kennedy. Oh, Joseph yeah. Kennedy was yeah. Joseph yeah, Kennedy. I don't even want to talk, but their <laughs> family might sue me. I don't want to say it. <laughs> no, they ain't suing you. They ain't suing you, man. I feed them out every now and then, you know, so they raise I don't want to say well, shit. What, what do millionaires and billionaires talk about when you're a link? Like, Money. If, if, you, if you understand <laughs> that, Education or other avenues yeah. is a myth. What are y'all talking about? Like, do y'all laugh at how people are? Like, why did I like? I mean, well, what they talk about, about in public and then what they talk about privately are completely different. So, well, you know, so, so I get a lot of shit because I show off the life, right? Because, oh, because okay. uh, like I was with a guy he's worth about eight billion dollars. He's like, him and his wife were like, why do you and your wife show your plane off? And I'm like. Why do you not show your plane off? By the way, you're showing your shit off to me right now. You show it off to me, but you don't show it off to the world. So once I get in your little fucking club, your little circle, you tell me how you did it. Why don't you tell the rest of the world, Dick, how you did it? That's crazy. Why are you so selfish no. with the information? And he Can't said to me, he's yeah. like, if I share it, I'm going to get hated. I said, that's what you're doing to me right now. Oh, wow. You're telling me I'm a show off and I'm telling you you're selfish. Dude, you hacked the system. You figured it out. And you're not telling people. 
I told myself when I was 16 years old, if I made it, and I didn't think I would, but if I ever made it, I was going to share it with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I wasn't going to close it up. The failures, the successes. Knowledge don't mean shit. It's not shared. How many fights did you win? 50? Yeah. You lost six? Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Everybody knows that, man. Okay, I've won 37 real estate deals that are fucking massive, like hundreds of millions of dollars. You can't talk about it. I should have rings. <laughs> I should have fucking belts. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna get belts with my properties on. Like if I was in the NFL, the NBA, I'd be a, I'd be like undefeated. Undefeated champion. And I did it my way. I didn't do it. I didn't have, I didn't join anybody's club to do it. I did it without JP Morgan. Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, Fidelity. I didn't use any of these Blackstones, Black Rocks. Everybody that's in real estate that does what I do, they go to the bank. They go to the big, basically the pimp. Wow. And they're like, put me in, put me in the game. They have no money in the game. I didn't use any of these people. And I'm like, I'm doing this shit my way. I'm gonna use it my audience. I'm gonna build an audience of people. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna um, disappoint my audience. I'm gonna take care of them. I'm not gonna fuck them over. I'm basically making the people around me the bank. Hey, Grant Cardone here. Check out my episode, Mike Tyson. This man, okay. hot boxing. Let's go. Yeah.